Hello everyone, how are you all? I hope you're all well. Boy have I missed you a lot. I hope you're all well. Welcome to the studio today. The weather's not too bad. I know I always mention the weather, but the weather can change the mood if it's really poor. So today it's okay. So today I'm feeling okay. I hope you're all well. Welcome to the live studio. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Tony Derrick and I'm a guest presenter over on Create and Craft and I love to craft basically. So if you are a crafter or would like some inspiration, pick up some hints, tips, some techniques then you've come to the right place. We are a lovely inspirational family here at, at the Stamps By Me studio. If you are watching on YouTube, don't forget to click the subscribe button and that puts you... Um, doesn't put you in with a chance to win anything unfortunately but it does let you know when we have all of our lovely notifications and when we're going live so you never miss a show and don't worry if you do miss a show because it stays on YouTube forever so I can't tell any fibs can't get out of that one so it's there and it's just there for you to share and inspire basically each other so if you are watching on Facebook or if you see the picture on Facebook and after this live show, if you could pop a comment underneath the YouTube video, that would be appreciated. That gives us a wider reach as well as Facebook too. So lots of lovely, lovely other crafters can see what we've been up to. So good to see you, Tony. Sorry, I, hi Avril, Sheena, Paula, May. Hi Brian, Carol. So Jane, Liz, Amanda, Elizabeth. It's lovely to see all the lovely faces and names that are here often here at Stamps By Me. So Carol has, uh, they haven't sold out Sweetheart. What's happened is um, CNC, Create and Craft, don't launch them till way, way later because the chances are I will travel all that way and they're going to sell out before I get there. So they don't launch them until either the day or the night before. So keep your eyes peeled on that one. Because I would hate to travel over two and a half hours or two hours and um, get there and say, you're going to have to go home. And I really do like to demo. <laughs> so they might be shown as sold out at the moment, but they're not sold out. They're just holding on to it. So if you are watching on the day, which is tomorrow, wait till the live hour, see if the price comes down further. And I have got the show times for you in my little book. So I'll just give you my book here in my, in my works, three pound book, you know incredible value as always at the works so if you've got a pen um my show times are tomorrow at 3 45 if you click the record button then you know you're not going to miss so tuesday tomorrow 3 45 wednesday 9 45 in the morning thursday 2 15 and friday 5 15 so i hope that's okay so we get a bit more inspiration, so that means I'm not going to be in studio all week so I'm going to be up and down the country like a yo-yo or down and up the country as a, like a yo-yo. But you'll still be able to get the inspiration over on Create and Craft. So, are we all okay? Are we ready to craft? I haven't got much to tell you about other than it is a brand new launch tomorrow and if you missed what I'm launching, I did um, do a studio live on Thursday showing you what is in the show. I didn't think I'd be here today because the show was meant to be today, but we've moved it on a little bit. Um, as you know, things can quickly change. And so we have to be a bit fluid in what we're doing. So any questions, just put, put a Q or QQ and then Nathan will let me know if I've missed it or vice versa and I'll keep my eyes on what you're all saying. So in today's studio, I'm going to use one of the brand new stamps. And the technique I'm going to show you today will work beautifully with your sparkly inks if you bought them at the weekend. Thank you so much if you did. There was a lot and they sold out, which is incredible. You're going to have some. And they will work incredibly well with the technique I'm going to show you today. However, mine are in my craft bag and my craft bag is not here. So, And I refuse to open fresh ones because I'm tight. So I'm just going to use my watercolours today, but you know, the... Um, technique can spread across all of your inks and your gouache and all the good stuff that you've got in your stash. So Sana, hi Sana, Sana's on the design team, sparkly inks and mind blow, they are really really cool. Oh everybody's waiting for them so that's brilliant. So shall we do some lovely lovely crafting? Have you got your cup of coffee? Cup of coffee or cup of tea? Red hot, absolutely red hot. So I've been told today, I've just said to Nathan, I look like a golfer today with this polo on. Do you all think I look like a golfer? I can't golf. 
I tell you now, I can't golf. I'm good at rounders, but I cannot golf. So um, let's craft. So first of all, I have a, yes, Bernadette says, yes, I look like a golfer. They'd kick me off the field. There'd be a few golf balls in a few greenhouses, I'm sure. So here is a piece of watercolour card. Now, this is the card that I'm using, and I'm using the watercolour card because you get a better result, and I can move the ink around until I'm absolutely happy. However, if you don't have watercolour card, please don't worry about it. You can use normal card, white cardstock. Just be mindful, though, that the ink won't move around as fluid if you're... Um, not using the watercolour so you might you'll get a lovely result but it'll be more probably textured because the normal cardstock will just drink your ink really quickly and not let you move it around as much i could so i have a um, just some masking tape some low tack tape here or should i say yeah it's masking tape it's the maya one which is on our website uh, it's super sticky though guys so if you are masking down your artwork you need to pop it on your jeans or your trousers and get rid of some of the stick because it's really sticky so I'm just going to hold my artwork in place I just pop it in the lines because if it's not straight Nathan will kill me and then we'll just take this one down so I'm going to give myself a little bit of a border so I'm taking the edge of the masking tape to the edge of the card like so so then i know my border around is going to be even so let's grab another sh i think this might be my next short one so sorry for the head just going to pop it in try and get it as cut as nice as possible i'm not going to press too hard as well because sometimes this tape has a tendency to tear your card and you need to peel it back really really slowly or pop your heat gun on it as well so but you might have something in your stash that works i do actually like this tape because um, nine times out of ten I don't get the leak underneath I can't promise it'll happen all the time um, so I'm happy to go with it but you know use what works for you at home and then I've got another super long piece which is nearly longer than the telly I'm just going to pop this down here so I have like a panel in the centre there we go so I have like set myself this lovely panel in the centre here <laughs> Nathan, you've got to keep your hands off me or Enid's going to get you. He bullies me, you know, guys. He doesn't really. He doesn't really. He's so um, chilled out, it's unreal. So in this show, I'm going to use this perfectly imperfect stamp, and it's a beautiful one. And it's one of the favourites. of They're all my favourites, so I can't really call this one my favourite. I love them all. And you get the lovely sentiments. These are in the show tomorrow, and there is a couple of bundles set up for you. But please don't forget, you can always get them as individuals on their own. So, you know, I know people's budgets not um, stretch to big bundles, and I've tried to break them down, so get what your budget will allow and then you get the coordinating dies on there too but today I'm just going to use the stamp I'll just show you the stamp it is loved see so oh, pop it on there look so you can see how big it is so it's going to fit lovely within my panel there first of all what I'm going to do is not tape first so I've just absolutely defeated the object there so let's paint our panel. So first of all, I have two colours here. So I have the wilted violet purple and a crushed olive green from my little mini distress inks. You can use any colours you want, guys, at home. So what I'm going to do first of all is just grab... just, just going to grab my mini Eureka here for my palette. So... If you've got your posh palette or a painting palette, perfect. So I'm just going to use the purple first. So let's get some purple on the top of this Eureka. And I'm just going to wet within this panel. I'm not going to go heavy with the water. I don't want it to flood. So I'm just going to paint within the panel. Make sure my tape's stuck down. And hopefully, hopefully it won't bleed underneath if we don't flood, flood, flood. But if it does, it'll just add towards... Um, the texture of our image I guess we're just gonna have to roll with it so let's just pop some water in this lovely panel now this is not a new technique this te technique's been around for a long long time but it is always nice to revisit techniques when you get new stamps because some of the stamps these fabulous companies are creating work really really well 
with older techniques too. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up some of this purple. I'm just going to spot some purple in here. Now I'm going to just go random. I'm not going to go like sterile, uh, like lines or symmetrical or anything like that. I'm just going to go absolutely um, rogue, basically. So just popping some purple in there. So let's get some more. I want it a little bit darker if we can. And this is where your gouache comes to into play or your actual pans, you see, because can't quite get that deepness of colour with the Distress Inks, as lovely as they are, I really want to like, you know, like a starry night, really deep, intense colour, but I'm going with it. So let's swap out for green. And I'm just going to spot some of this lovely green in the spaces. And this is the crushed olive, which is a really, really pretty colour. So wet the cardstock first and then pounce that colour in. Right, so for me to try and intensify that colour, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry that back and then build on it. Because while it's wet, I'm just diluting the colour. So let's just dry that back. actually got some sparkle in this must have been some sparkle at the bottom of my water pot <laughs> right so I have a funny feeling that these colors are not going to probably get much deeper than what's on there so I'm just going to grab my watercolor pan and I'm going to build on top of it and make it as dark try and make it darker So, and I don't have the other purples or the greens to try and make it darker, so I'm going to add some purple. So whilst I've got that and it's completely dry, to activate it again so I can pop some colour back on top and get the sort of like fused watercolour effect, I'm just going to spray it with water, you know, just to activate the card again. If I was to do this with my brush right now, what would happen is I would bleed all the colours, you know, they'd start, start to make a bit of a muddy mess. So using the spray and not using a brush to push it around is gonna stop the, there we go, look, stop the interference. So I'm just gonna go over where I've just been. I do honestly try when I'm trying to be creative for studio, I do try to use lots of different painting mediums because I appreciate a lot of you probably have got all of the stuff that I've got, but nonetheless have probably only got a few things too. So I'm going to use this green because this is the only one I have. So try and stay away from them connecting like so. So you get a solid green, and I'll pick that piddle, pud, piddle, puddle up in the centre in a second. So I'm just getting that colour down. There we go. That's better. This is where I wanted to be, and at the moment it looks a muddy mess. I appreciate that, but don't things always look a muddy mess when we first start out? So have the courage to see your card to the very end. So let me just pick up that puddle. There we go. So let's dry this one off. And that's much more, that's way, way darker, which is perfect. Just going to pull that puddle away from my tape, because I hope it doesn't bleed under, but we will see. And this is the good thing about, you know, just playing. 
you learn what works, what doesn't work. If you didn't like the results, let's change the colour. So let's try and get this tape off. If it's bled, it shouldn't be too bad. It's just simply because I'm going to put fresh tape on. Oh, that's not too bad. I'm pleased with that. So let's just set that aside. Oh, look at that. I think we've just saved that, have we? You see how popping the tape onto your jeans really does help. So you end up with this like lovely, lovely, you could call it a galaxy if you wanted to. Aurora Borealis with some white splats would look like a sky. So apart from that one little line, we're good to go. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm just going to, let's just make some space. Let's just have a drink of coffee. <laughs> So get some more tape and pop it on my jeans because I really don't want um, it to tear my card and if it tears my card I guess it's not the end of the world if you've got a rubber because the rubber will push it back however if we can avoid a tearing our card it is better. <laughs> so what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to take the tape and I'm going to put the tape along the line here so this time We've painted inside. Like so. And let's just swap this around. But what we're going to do on the outside is we're going to blend with our brush rather than paint. So you get two sort of textures. And what we'll do is we'll use the lovely purple and green that we initially started with, you know, with our ink pads. So we'll get two sort of textures. So let's do these two panels first and then we'll swap out the tape. So I'm just going to grab a blending brush. Let's just make sure it's clean. Just get rid of the ink. So it's these two lovely colours that we're going to use if you are following along. I'm just making sure my brush is absolutely clean. Get rid of any of that ink. There we go. I will just... I'm just going to grab a piece of paper to blend underneath or else it'll end up all over my mat. There we go. So let's pop this on here. So... Let's go purple first, so pick up some of this purple, hopefully, yeah. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to blend up to our painted line with the purple. and get it as much colour on there as I can. So that's one side. 
then I'll just turn it around and we'll do this side. So I have a few things to tell you about just while I'm blending this. If you remember the downloads that I told you all about from Craft Academy, so the step-by-steps where um, I said that you would be able to print them off as a PDF, can you remember? So all of the Craft Academy PDFs are being loaded like now. So the way to find them is if you go to... Um, downloads on our website so down the left hand side of our website you'll see all the categories and there's one with downloads if you click in downloads there is a category category called craft academy if you click in there you will see all of the lovely step by steps with a full color picture of the finished card and full step by steps for every single one of those craft academy um, tutorials also the great thing about them in is taking it to that next level two things actually if you look on the right hand corner of that PDF there is a play button if you click that play button it takes you to the sped up version of me creating that card however if you don't want to watch the sped up version and it's all all over and you don't know what's going on because it's too fast if you click into the PDF the second line down there is the original studio so so much there for you to look at if you want to print it off and download it you can do all of that stuff if you want to watch the one minute 30 highlight you can do that so they are being loaded on i think there's a few in there now go and have a look later today and every day we're getting them loaded 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 so you can see every single tutorial added throughout craft academy i think there's about i couldn't even tell you there's a lot Okay, so if you're thinking, do you know what, I missed out on Craft Academy, I really don't know how she made that card, how did she do it? There is a picture of the finished card, and if you like that finished card, click in it. If you want to see the sped up video, click the play in the corner, and it'll take you straight to the video. Or, if you want to watch the full video, there is a link just underneath the picture for the full video. How cool is that? So, the girls and Nathan have all worked extremely hard to get them done for you. Nathan's been doing photography and speeding up the videos and the girls, girls and the design team have been writing all of the lovely step by steps. So I hope you um, utilise them and get something out of them. That's why they're there. And if you bought the stamp, you're going to need that inspiration. So, you know, it doesn't, your stamp doesn't get popped in a cupboard and forgotten about. You'll be able to use it more than you probably would. So we have our two lovely purple panels there. Okay, so let's take the tape off. Now you're gonna have to carefully do this. I really don't want it to tear my card. I'm just gonna take my time with it. I'm just gonna set that aside because I might need it. And I'll take off this one too. So take your time. Always pull the tape like away from you if you're doing it this way or towards you if you the alternate way. There we go. So if you can see the lovely panel coming together there. So what you're going to have to do now is we're going to paint it green. But what I'm going to do is I need this bit of tape here to cover this edge so the green doesn't go into the purple. Does that make sense? I hope so. So we'll put that one there. I'm not wasting my tape, hey? So I've created like a abstract sort of looking panel here. So it's just a case of moving that tape around oop, and being quite playful with your tape. So I'll just pop this back on here. Look, follow that purple line. And if, you, if your colours contaminate and you think, oh, I've got a bit of green on my purple there, it's not the end of the world because your image, your stamped image is going to be the focal point of the card. So don't worry about it. Like so. And then what we just need to do is get a piece of fresh tape to cover our watercolour panel so the green doesn't go onto there. Just popping it on my jeans here. 
making sure I get rid of all that sticky sticky because it's just for blending. Just don't want to play ball that one does it? Story of my life hey? So I hope you do enjoy those lovely lovely step by steps. I know a lot of you will get a lot out of them I really do. So I'm just going to pop this one down here up to the panel. And then we can do the green in this panel. So let's swap out our colour. First of all though, I am using the same brush. So I'm going to swap out colour. So I'm just going to get rid of that excess purple on there. So we get a lovely tone of green and it's not mixed in with my purple. So I'm give it a really good push down. I think we're good to go there. So let's put the lid on purple because we don't want to have a boo-boo. Just have a drink of coffee before it goes cold. So let's pick up some of the green. So we're just blending that green onto the left and right hand side panels this time. So really it's just about creating the lovely texture and giving point of difference. So we've got watercolour here but we've got blended on the outside so it's just going to make your card look a little bit different than the, you know, the norm. But you don't have to do the colour on the outside like I'm doing. You can just leave it as a white panel. It looks really effective that way. You see lots of cards done like that. But today I just wanted to, you know, chop it up a little bit, try something a little bit different. And I love it when two textures meet. So we've got the watercolour and then the blending. I love it when we have two textures going on. So let's just move, take this off carefully. And then we'll just move this one to this side, like we did. Let's just make it easier for me to blend. I'm trying to be frugal with my tape, but it's clearly not working. I need to get another piece. Again, on the jeans just in case. I don't want to ruin it at the last minute. So I'm just going to pop, cover that purple panel there. So oh, is it fiddly? It is quite fiddly, but when you get the end result, it is so worth it. So, and I, what else are we going to be doing, hey? And if you are making one card, make three, remember? <laughs> so I'll just pop that down there for now. And then we'll just get a long panel. Yeah, Craft Academy is now finished. We're looking at doing something again. Um, again, you know, very similar setup to last time um, with our food bank. A very, very smaller scale though, because, you know, it's not needed as much. I do appreciate some of you are still shielding, but the majority of people have had to go back to work now and have had to do things they wouldn't have normally been able to do during the lockdown. But you know, we are still here. We are still here with the inspiration. And if I'm not in studio, you'll find Claire's in studio or somebody's in studio. So we do try and make sure we've got a packed, a packed sort of like schedule for everybody. So at least if you turn on once a day, you're going to get something, whether it be a pre-record or just something, because I do appreciate some of you are home on your own too, on your own. So. A different face is great sometimes. So I'm just getting that lovely green. Now I've picked purple and green because it's not a colour I would normally pink. I'd probably pink pinks and oranges and purples and reds, fuchsias. So I try and pick a colour where you're thinking, well, I would never put those two colours together normally.
So I have like a pretty, pretty panel here. So let me just dry this off with my gun. Because any moisture in my card now is going to cause me a problem. Christina, Bethany, the winner of the last stamp I just gave out. Christina, it went today, sweetheart. So um, I'm sorry I wasn't in Friday. I was obviously at the studio, but it's gone today. Packed it myself, so you should expect it maybe tomorrow or the day after. Royal Mail is pretty much back to its good old self now, which is incredible given the circumstances. So sticky ink pad. I'm just finding the traditional gold. I must get a big pot of Claire's gold instead of faffing around with my little pots. I must buy one of the big ones. I'll have to use my little miniature one. So with the lovely stamp that we're launching tomorrow, let's just move this water out of the way. I'm going to stamp this in the center so it's a quite quite a big stamp it is really quite a big stamp so and it's got some beautiful beautiful sentiments in here absolutely gorgeous so now I'm going to position my lovely stamp which should just fit seamlessly within the panel but the sides should encroach out can we see that there it's like it was meant to be it was actually, I did, I did plan for that to happen, but you know. So I might just move it up a slight bit because I have a nice sentiment to go here. Let's just move it up a little bit more. There we go. So because we've used the distress inks and they carry lots and lots of moisture, the chances are when you come to put your embossing powder on here now, it's going to stick everywhere. Even though I've heat, even though I've um, sort of blasted it off with my gun the chances are there is going to be loads and loads of moisture in this card so I'm absolutely battering it to death <laughs> with this anti-static because I really hope it's dry enough but if not don't worry about lots of powder on your work because it does brush off so sticky ink pad and let's ink this one up Because I can't see if it has or if it hasn't stamped because there's that much anti-static on there, I'm going to go twice. Just standing up so I can put a bit of pressure on there. So I'll just fold this piece of card. And hopefully it won't stick anywhere. Hopefully. Can you see what I mean? Can we see that here? I mean, it'll brush off with a brush. But because we have moisture in that card, it has stuck. But it's only stuck there by the look. So I'm pleased with that. These are the risks we take, you see. So I'll just pop that back in my pot. And I'll just grab a dry brush, it won't be a second. And get rid of that. So it's not a great shake if you do get it over, just brush it away. But these are the risks you take with the distress inks because they hold so much moisture. If you don't blast off properly, you are going to inevitably be left 
with embossing powder everywhere. Just turn it round. To be honest with you though, if you do get it everywhere, it's not the end of the world. It just creates texture on your card. So as long as you're not bothered about, you know, a bit of variation in your card, it's really, really not the end of the world. We'll go with that, hey? So let's heat set this one. So if you are using an embossing ink, you need to heat set. So gun hot. So I'm just getting my gun hot. Less time on my card means less warp in my card. <laughs> and then hopefully you'll see, as soon as I pop it on, the changing of the powder. You can just chase. you end up with is something like this really really pretty can you see that there? it's huge it is a big stamp so let's add our sentiment because we're not finished yet see me checking my time there because I'm having so much fun it's not, it's not good so let's use one of the lovely sentiments in here so let's have a look at this never look back very fitting and I'm going to go black on this one. Make sure it's straight. So, black ink for this one. absolutely gorgeous so let's just move this out of the way so let's be a little bit more creative now so in these open daisy heads here I've got my white gouache and I'm going to paint some white into there to bring the picture to the foreground so it doesn't look like it's all getting lost I'm going to bring it to the forefront of my card I'm just going to use my um, Eureka here lid so this is just white gouache if you've got the gouache tubes it's the same um, if you've got the pots, it's the same. So I'm just going to pick up some of this white here, some water. And what this is going to do is it's just going to pop some white into those daisy heads. Just get rid of some water in there. So if you're thinking, oh, I'm not sure about this, I am so not sure about this, just pop a little bit on. Can you see there how we've brought that daisy to life there? So I'm not going to, I'm not trying to push the whole thing back at all I'm just trying to create a bit of dimension on my card so the embossing powder it will resist so much okay but because it's gouache and it's of a thicker consistency you just need to be mindful of that so when you're popping it on make sure it's watered down and the gold will still come through so basically all I'm doing is just popping I'm not even filling them properly I'm just popping that white into those leaves petals more so Can we see how the daisies popped there? So, and the, let's do the large one up here. So I'm just angling my brush because I'm using a flat headed brush here. A round one would be better. So I'm not trying to make it look solid white. If I wanted it solid white, I would have used a masking fluid and then obviously colored the background so the cardstock would still be underneath. I'm not trying to create that look. I'm just trying to push it back a little bit. And I'm just using the side of my brush here. And it will dry back pretty much lighter. And I'm doing the leaves too. So again, it's just creating that texture rather than a flat image. Stay within the lines.
just filling in those leaves, just trying to make it pop. So as it dries back, it sort of like pushes it back a little bit. Now you can go in and add more if you want to, make it more vibrant, should we say. So less water. You see there? So the l less water you use, the vibrant the white's going to be. So I would do exactly what I've just done there. Do it first step if it's not dark enough or bright enough. Go back in. and make it darker. It's better to go light to dark than it be too dark and you not like it and try and recover it. Let's see if we can get away with a bit more white in here. How's that looking? I think that looks okay. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some more water on my brush. I'm going to dilute a little bit more of this gouache back and I'm just going to add the traditional splats as I always do. And what this, the, splat, the splats will dry back pretty much non-existent, but what the splats are going to do is, do you, just, do you see this line where I've not quite, sorry, headshot. You see this here where I've not quite connected there and here a little bit. The spots are going to take your eye away from it. Okay, so have the courage to add those splats. Because they'll dry back to pretty much nothing. There we go. So let's just heat set that one and we'll get it mounted onto our lovely card. So I'm just going to use my gun again. And you'll see at this point how pretty much the white disappears. So you might have to do a bit of layer building. Okay. Oops. To get the results you're looking for. But again, it's one of those things, isn't it? As long as you're enjoying doing it, it doesn't really matter how many layers it takes until you're absolutely happy. Yourself, you're the card maker. Just tidying up whilst I'm drying. You see those spots are practically gone. So you can go back over now and add more if should you wish. But yeah, be a bit um, withdrawn with it and then you can add more if you want to. So paint wise, the gouache acrylics would work too. Um, Christine, acrylics would definitely work. Unfortunately, your white from your um, watercolors wouldn't because these are too vibrant and you just it just disappear to practically nothing. So it'd have to be something like that. Your white pencils, your watercolour white pencil would um, enhance it. Um, your oil pastel pencils, the white pencil in there, any light colour, they would all work. So let's get this on a card. So I'll just grab a tape pen. Excuse me. There we go. So I'm just using a tape pen for speed. And I'm going to use glue too. So I wasn't, I'm not matte and layering. Oh, I am going to use glue, she said. I am. Um, I'm not matte and layering onto any colours because, or golds or anything like that, just simply because the focus is the daisy today. You don't want to draw your eye away from that. This would look really lovely with some sequins on too. So I'll just give that a second to grab. And I can feel all the powder on it from my anti-static bag, so I would give it a dust off. So I'm just going to make sure that's straight. I'll turn it over. Yep, Christi Kirsty, sorry, that's right. White gel pen shows up perfectly well. You know, your uni balls would work. But you know me, I just like to paint, so it's always going to be with a brush or a pencil or something like that. So, so there we go. 
something a little bit different today with the panels and things like that but you can absolutely chop and change it you could have used your sparkle pens and made the daisy sparkly if you want to do your sparkle paints that you've all bought um, the other day so let me just stand it up and show you and hopefully you, there we go you can see there we go better there you can see the white better there there we go so watercolour panel and then um, blended on the outsides. So personal preference, you could have left the outsides if you wanted to. It's, it's absolutely our choice. But I'm here to just maybe encourage you to pick up a brush or a blending tool. Uh, and it's up to you where it takes you at the end of the day. So I hope you like that one. Um, I will post a picture. Don't forget to pop a comment under the YouTube video as well after we've gone live. That would be much appreciated. And I don't think I've got anything else to tell you about. Don't forget to check out the PDRs. They are absolutely free, guys. Um, all, all for you to utilise your stamps to the absolute max. So go and check that out. And whatever you're doing, have a lovely evening. And I'll see you all tomorrow over on Create and Craft at 3.45 with this brand new collection. I'll see you all then. Take care, everyone. Bye.